And I'd like to wish all the mothers happy Mother's Day. We thank God for this day. We thank God for our mothers. I thank God for my mother who has helped me become the woman that I am. I thank God for my mother in love. And that's through marriage. She has helped to shape me to also become the woman that I am. And I praise God for mothers. We know that mothers take on a great task. And it is a call. A lot of people don't realize that being a mother is a call. And God honors you mothers on today because of the love that you pour into your families, the way that you take care of your children, the way you pour God into them, the way you pray for them, the way you labor for them in the gospel. God loves you mothers. I want you to be encouraged on today. This is a great day that God has given us. You can be excited. Take your time, take your seat. Be celebrated because you deserve to be celebrated. I pray that for all the mothers, your children will rise up and call you blessed. They will show you how much you are loved. And we just thank God for you. For those of you who may have lost your mothers, God is your mother. God, he, The Spirit of God is there to encourage you, to know that you are not alone. And there are people that love you. You have extended family. You have your church family, and you are loved. You don't have to feel lonely on today. I want you to be blessed on today. Enjoy your day. Celebrate and allow others to celebrate you because you deserve to be celebrated. Happy Mother's Day. One more time, time, time.
and shout. Just to sing and shout. Just to sing and shout. Just to sing and shout. Well, I said, be in the service one more time.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to invoke you to come in or ask you to be in here. You're already here, and we just say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, because you're able, Lord. You're, you're even, God, your anointing overflows to giving, Lord God. You bless us in every area. You are a holistic God. Hallelujah. You're trying to get blessings to a whole people, and we just bless your name, Lord God. Lord, bless this word, God. Let it go forth with power, understanding, demonstration, and anointing. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, let it go forth, God. Oh, Lord, let it equal the warfare that I had to go through, Lord, to birth this word. Oh, Lord Jesus, have your way. I say it. Jesus said the words that I speak. They are spirit and they are life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Put your hands together and bless God. Hallelujah. Can we make some noise? Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. James uh, chapter 4, starting at verse 4, reading verse 4 to 5, and then verse 7 to 8. It says, Ye, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I'm, I'm going to have to step on your toes for a minute, but then I'm going to lift you up. Amen. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. That's powerful. The spirit that he has placed within us should be faithful to him. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, so humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Verse 8 come close to God. See, we stop at verse 7, but we don't go to verse 8. It says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided, divided between God and the world. Hallelujah. Help me announce my topic. Say it in the air. If you're not close to anybody, God birthed this within me. Raising up the resistance. Raising up the resistance. We're in a time we're in an hour that God is looking for the resistance a portion of his army hallelujah it's time to raise the resistance hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah I'm going to read it from the message Bible just so you have a clear understanding you are cheating on God if all you want is your own way flirting with the world every chance you get you end up enemies of God and his way. And you do and do you suppose God doesn't care? The proverb has it that he's a fiercely jealous lover. Good God Almighty. He's a fiercely jealous lover. And he and and what he gives in love is far better than anything else you'll find. It's common, so let God, God, let God work his will in you. Yell aloud, no to the devil, and watch him scamper. Say a quiet yes to God, and he'll bring, and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. I'm talking to the saints. Yes, I am. God wants all your heart. God wants all of your mind. God wants all of his spirit that that he gave you. He said, I'm jealous. I want you to love me with what I put inside of you. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before God, before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to press through and preach this word, raising up the resistance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What is resistance? One, it's a refusal to accept or comply with something. The attempt to prevent something by action or argument. Hallelujah. What else is it? The ability not to be affected by something, especially adversely. See, we're dabbling. We got one foot in the church, and then we got the other foot in the world. The problem is we're not winning anybody in the world. We're going over to their side. But God is telling you today, it's time to raise the resistance. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost brought to me that Paul said, I became all things to all people that I may reach one. Hallelujah. Or that I may reach some. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. He got down on their level long enough to raise them up to his. Hallelujah. He didn't fall over into the trap of the enemy. He didn't give over into sin. I'm going to get on your level long enough to let you know that I can relate to you. I've been where you are. But sister, we can't stay here. Get up and let's go higher in God. Hallelujah. It's time for the church, the people that name the name of Jesus, to get real about the things of God. It's time to raise the resistance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The problem is we don't put up any resistance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is a military arm called the resistance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In military terminology, resistance or organized resistance refers to the ability of a military unit to continue to oppose an attack. Hallelujah. Ask somebody, what are you opposing? Hallelujah. Or are we so spiritually weak that we don't even recognize when the enemy attacks us? My God, hallelujah. But I'm a part of God's army. And I'm not just a part of any portion of the army, but I'm a part of the resistance. Hallelujah. Do this. Not over here. I'm a part of God's resistance. Hallelujah. The church was designed to be an organized resistance in this hour. We are to be an organized, organizational resistance to the enemy and his tactics. For some, pandemic fatigue has left, led to salvation failure. I'm going to say that again. For some, pandemic fatigue has led to salvation failure. For others, it has caused us to draw a line in the sand, dig our heels in, and say, not on my watch. Not on my watch, devil. You may have brought this pandemic, but guess what? Even in a pandemic, God will call that to work for our good. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I got a consistent in prayer life during a pandemic hallelujah I don't know about you but I know I can hear the voice of God clearer during a pandemic hallelujah God speaks to me during a pandemic give him praise hallelujah the Lord gave me a formula years ago he said temptation Plus resistance equals power. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. Temptation plus resistance equals power. You know why we don't have any power, Kiana? Because we don't have any resistance. Hallelujah. I want you on your time to go to Matthew chapter 4 and read how the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The Spirit led him there. Hallelujah. But God gave me a different view on it, Bishop. Temptation is, is present to prove our spiritual strength, not to expose our weakness. Good God Almighty, you'll get that tomorrow. Temptation is present. It exposes our spiritual strength, but not there. It proves our spiritual strength, but it exposes, not to expose our weakness. Yes, we have a weakness, but during when Jesus was in the wilderness, the only weakness that was highlighted, it said that after 40 days and nights of fasting, he was hungry. He was hungry. He wasn't that weak that every time the devil came to him, he came, Jesus came back. He rebutted it with scripture. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm hungry, but I'm filled with God's word. value of temptation is that it exposes what's 
in you. The problem is we major on the weaknesses instead of highlighting our strengths. Hallelujah. We are powerless because we are so comfortable with our sin nature to the point of no resistance. It's all right. I fought to preach this message, so I expect you to be quiet. Hallelujah. We are powerless. I'm talking about in the church. We are powerless. I'm talking about you who speak in tongues. We are powerless. I'm talking about you who run around these walls, spin, blow bubbles, want to go lay hands on everybody. I'm talking to you. We are powerless. Because we are so comfortable with our sin nature to the point of no resistance. We can't even recognize that we're in a spiritual battle because there's no resistance. And when your resistance is down, you don't have the ability to fight. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. That's in the natural and the spiritual. Hallelujah. I know I can only get but so tired, missionary, because then my natural defenses are down. My immunity becomes weakened, and then whatever comes out, whatever virus is there, will take a hold of my cells and begin to manifest. It's the same way spiritually. If you don't put up any resistance, if you don't do the things that's going to birth a fight in you, you cannot fight. We are now comfortable with dysfunction, death, and destruction. We are immune to sin. Hallelujah. God needs people who can discern the times, the temptations, and the talk. Hallelujah. He needs people that can discern the times, the temptation, and the talk. What is the temptation? The people of God's relative ease to cross boundaries. That's what the temptation is. We can easily cross boundaries without taking a second thought. What is the talk? It's the enemy's rhetoric. You got to be able to discern the time. What time is it? It's end time, in case you don't know it. Hallelujah. I don't want to scare anybody, but if you're not in God, in the world, there could, something worse is coming than the pandemic. But I don't know about you. I'm going to be a part of the rapture church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is raising up the resistance army who will stand in the face of the devil and tell him, I will not eat your bread. I will not jump at your directives and I will not bow to your tactics. These are the three things he came to Jesus at in the wilderness. Oh, he hungry. I'm going to offer him something to eat. Jesus came back with scripture. Oh, he think he got power. I'm going to offer him all the kingdoms of the world. But Jesus said, don't you know who I am? Hallelujah. And then he offered him all of his power. He didn't need his power. Don't you know he is all powerful? I can stop this temptation right now. All I gotta do is look at you. I beheld you one time falling from heaven. There will be, there will be a second time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I got to say that again. God is raising up a resistance army who will stand in the face of the devil and tell him, I will not eat your bread. I will not jump at your directives and I will not bow at your tactics. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. I don't need your amens because I know I'm preaching truth. Hallelujah. First John 2, 15 to 17, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. And the world is passing away. Hallelujah. And the lust of it. But 
he who does the will of God abides forever. Thank you, Jesus. Who is ready to be a part of God's, hallelujah, resistance army? Hallelujah. Who's going to join me and stand in the front of the enemy and say, not on my watch. Hallelujah. If I were to tell you some of the ways the enemy would attack me and has attacked me, half of you would not be able to handle it. Hallelujah. But evidently, God put a fierceness within me. It may be quiet and sometimes it may be silent. But let me tell you something. In my silence, I stand flat footed and say, devil, I'm not scared of you. I don't care what you you try to threaten me with, I will stand for God. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. In my Bible, when I was studying this, hallelujah, I read down to the 11th verse, but in Matthew 4, hallelujah, Matthew 4, 1 to 11, Hallelujah. It was after that, verses 12 and on, there was a subtitle that the Holy Ghost highlighted to me. It's a subtitle in my Bible. It says the, uh, the next view, a few verses, it says the ministry of Jesus begins. After he came out of the temptation, after he exited the wilderness, how many of you can't get a beginning in your ministry because you can't successfully come out of the temptation. You can't successfully exit your wilderness. Hallelujah. I know what it is to be in a wilderness. Hallelujah. I know what it is to be in the wilderness. In 2018, the fall of that year, God took me through a wilderness. Just like Jesus, he led me through the spirit into the wilderness. Hallelujah. And all I can tell you, it was a place that I felt like I needed to escape. All I wanted to do was run. But I stood the temptation. There were times, missionary, and I told nobody, and God still is trying to make it all make sense to me. But when he took me in that wilderness, there were days I wanted to just, I, I should just end it all. And I'm good and saved. I know I'm saved. Hallelujah. But the Lord showed me at the end of it all. I said, this was months later. I said, God, you got to show me the purpose of it. What was going on in that season? The Lord showed me in a dream that I was surrounded by demons. It was part human, part animal head. Hallelujah. And when I tried to go through, they had me encircled. But when I tried to go through, they tried to, to, to block me, to bring up a spirit of fear. You know, sometimes you dream, you can feel the emotion. But then I was able to break through. Hallelujah. See, I'm one of those. I know that I'm a target mother for the enemy. But I don't care if I got to crawl. Come hell or high water. I'm going to preach this gospel to all nations. I'm going to see this community saved. I'm going to see this church in its Bible ministry. I'm going to see us operate in our power. Hallelujah. So I'm ready. Now I'm ready for my ministry to begin. Are you ready for your ministry to begin? Then raise the resistance. Then put up a fight. When the world offers you something, at least put up a fight. At the least, at the least, put up some resistance. My God, who wants to be a part of God's militia? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm ready to raise the resistance. 
I'm ready. This church can be a part of God's kingdom army, and we can be called the resistance. Holy Temple Church, the resistance church. The resistance church. Not over here, not in here, not on my watch, not in my church, not in my pulpit, not on my step, not in my home, not in my marriage, not in my family. I'm going to tell you, a lot of you, your ministry hasn't begun because you couldn't withstand the temptation. Remember, we always highlight the bad things about temptation. But flip the script. Temptation is to highlight what you're strong in. All the devil can say is all the scripture can say that Jesus was hungry after 40 days of fasting. Oh, that's all it can say. That's all they can say. He was hungry, but it neglected to say, but you saw it is, is that he was full of the word of God. Hallelujah. See, if you don't know God's word, you don't have nothing to resist with. My God, it's all right. They'll get it tomorrow. Let me tell you something. God didn't ask you to be strong all the time by yourself. He didn't ask you. He didn't ask you to be, I can't do it, you can't do it. Hallelujah. Go get you a resistance partner. Hallelujah. What do you think we're doing when we come and congregate together and we worship and we bless the name of Jesus and we put him on his throne? We are now resistance partners. Hallelujah. But don't forget the most important partner, the paracletos, the Ruach HaKodesh. We have the spirit within us. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. One of my favorite scriptures, and I'm done, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God through the pulling down of strong holes, casting down arguments, because that's what imagination is. It's your mind and the devil's voice. And then there's an argument that pursues. So God said, I gave you the power to cast down that argument. That's what Jesus did in the wilderness. He cast down the argument that he was weak. He cast down the argument that he was powerless. He cast down the argument that he was Lord of all. Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You know why I can fight? Because I have knowledge of God. Without knowledge, you have no weapon to fight. There's a point in a message years ago that the Lord dropped in my spirit, tell the devil that knowledge took your place. You can't fool me the way you did last year. You can't trick me the way you did last year. See, I know a little bit more than I did the year before. I know God a little bit better. I'm praying much more. We talk all the time. Tell the devil, knowledge took your place. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready. This is my honor. Being ready to punish all disobedience. And you know why I have that authority? Because my obedience is fulfilled. I have the right because I am listening to God. I have the right because I am obeying God. I have the right to bring down every 
demonic stronghold because I'm in spiritual alignment. Hallelujah. Raising up the resistance. My God. Hallelujah. The enemy tried everything to keep this word from getting to you. It's all right, but I'm used to his tactics. I'm used to his tactics. But we, as the blood-bought church of the living God, have to raise the resistance. And once you do, watch your ministry begin. Jesus had to go through the wilderness. But by all means, don't get stuck in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Come out of the wilderness with a fight. Come out of the wilderness with a greater determination. Come out of the wilderness with a greater knowledge of God and look the devil flat in his face I'm ready to resist you so my ministry can begin <laughs> hallelujah do we have a church of resistance leaders hallelujah hallelujah our new name is holy temple church of the resistance not of the fresh harvest of the resistance Hallelujah. We're going to let the enemy and all his imps know that you're going to stop right at the door. You really don't have a right to come up the steps, but if you get that far, you won't get any further. Sing to peace.